All right, folks, two puzzles remain in the Grey Sigil area of Road to Gehenna. Um, where are they? Let's follow the signs. Where did the signs say to go? There's one over there, apparently, and then one over there. I see you. So it's probably that one and this one. Okay, this is the start of this one. <clears throat> I do like the puzzles in this area. It's very cool. Binary. Like, I kind of wish more of the game was this. <laughs> this kind of thing. Like, I think what's cool about this, right, is, like, there are system. like, there's a system, right? There's a system of how... There's the basic system of, like, you're, you're joining lasers, or, like, sources of lasers to the targets, and opening doors, and then you're having to move these around to get the lasers to go in different directions or whatever. And that's the basic system that the base game does explore quite a lot. The cool thing about what we're doing here is it's like another system, or it's like a, a deeper layer to that system. We're now, we're now like going, oh, but like, if two layers cross, then they, they clash in the middle. And because of that, that affects that laser and that switches off a different thing. And you can actually use that to your benefit. It's not just like, like the base game always treats that as a, it's just a fail state. Oh, lasers are clashing. That's not, that's never gonna be part of a solution, but you can actually use that as part of a solution. Like that's one thing that's really common in puzzle design is you think about like, oh, how can various aspects of my system that feel like fail states actually be useful and make an interesting, like how do you make an interesting puzzle out of them? And this is basically exploring that, um, which I think is really cool. And the, re the reason it feels satisfying in a way that I think some of the puzzles earlier in this DLC didn't feel as satisfying, is that it feels just as systemic. Like, like the, the rules around like what happens if I like do this are consistent and you can reason about how things will behave like that. And I'm not saying that other things aren't, well, some things aren't consistent, like the trajectories of <laughs> fans and whatever. Um, but, but things like, you know, that puzzle where I had to like block the two lasers with my body to stop the fan, it's relying on a kind of awkward, continuous space of like, oh, how big is the collision box of my body and where do exactly do the lasers collide with my body? And like, it just feels a little janky because of that. Whereas this is like, this doesn't feel janky. Like even the idea of like, oh, I can like, you know, place a, a thing in the middle of a laser. I like that as well. It just feels like it's just a, it's another layer of system to reason within, I think. I think that makes it super satisfying. Anyway, uh, here's where I'm trying to go. There's the gate to get in there. Um, which is just like, it's through here. There are two connectors if I go through there, which is interesting. How does this open? Is there a jammer somewhere? There's a jammer behind there, okay. So I let you out. Like, what's the issue if I just let you out? Like, I can do that, right? Is there gonna be something here about mines blocking lasers? Probably. Let me back out. Thank you. Okay, because it's very easy to get these. Yeah, this is gonna be about using that mine to do something fun. Okay. <clears throat> so you're all the way around here, which necessitates having... But well, we need blue and red. Okay. So what would it take to get blue and red? Quite a lot. Oh no, it's separate gates. Okay, so we do one then the other. Yep, 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 yep. So what we're definitely doing is something like this. And then something like... this and making the switch between blue and red. Red first. And we're using this fella to do it. I think I'm happy with closing this gate actually when you're on the outside. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so let's get you to the side so you're a bit less in the way or maybe like over here. Okay. So one of these two is going to be the blue one, one is going to be the red one, pointing at that. And how do I set it up so that you 
we'll swap the two over. Well, if this, go, if, laser, if this laser goes here, well, that blue laser will get broken. But only for a moment. Let me think about this. How exactly does the switch over happen? Like, if, if you're here, and we have this and this. So right now, they're just clashing in the middle. And they'll maybe open for a moment. Oh, in fact, it only requires a moment, so I think I'm done, actually. Will blue come? Yeah, blue comes as well. Okay, I am done. So it's red in a second. There we go. And then blue. Well, red happens again. Red happens twice, then blue happens twice. Ta-da! Very cool. Yep, another neat consequence of that. Um, and like, you might be like, isn't this similar to like blocking the, the two things with your body? I think blocking with a laser with your body is fine. I have no issue with that. I think what I have issue with is the kind of awkward angling you have to do to make sure you're blocking both lasers in that puzzle at the same time. Whereas here it's not about that, right? Like, sure, there is like there are awkward angles and you're hitting them, but it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter what angle this is at. It's just about like you interrupting the laser. So it's almost it collapses to a more discrete space, which just feels ultimately more satisfying in my opinion. I might stop that so it's not making so much noise. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, uh, this might be the final puzzle of the DLC. I don't think there's another layer of stuff, as far as I know. There's no stars in this area, right? Not according to the sign. Uh, huh, okay. Ray Mania. We had Ray Trivia, now we've got Ray Mania. <laughs> cool. Uh, oh, and it is a similar setup. Look at it. Ah, uh, Ray Trivia was a cool puzzle. <laughs> uh oh. Wait, what do you, how do you open? Can I see? Is there a jammer? Do we have a jammer in this version of this puzzle? Oh, we do. We didn't in the previous one, did we? No. Let's just get all the resources out into the open. Since I have a jammer, and it looks like they're all behind one door. Uh, uh, uh. Let's put them together, actually. Uh, uh. Uh, do we have four? What's that we have four? Okay. Oh. There we go. We have four, and then the exit is... On which side? This side. And there's a door here. So ultimately, we need to get through there with the jammer. So the jammer can't be involved in the setup that gets red and blue here. Understood. Oh gosh, this could be complicated. Hopefully I can reuse some of the things I learned from Ray Trivia here. All right, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just staring at this being like, oh my gosh, this seems overwhelming. So these two, no. These two, opposite each other, require two lasers each. Ultimately, to hit this, there's going to have to be a thing over here for red, and there's going to have to be a thing over here for blue. Two of these have to be out to the edge. Oh, not true. Well, yes, no, that is true. It's just... So I basically was looking at that laser source thinking, oh, this could just be connected directly to that, which is true, but it still has to be out there, right? Like, to, to get from any of these laser sources to those, there has to be one out there. It just means that one in here doesn't necessarily have to be involved in blue. What can you see? You can see red. So it's the same there, except they would be crossing over each other. Okay, so two are going to be outside. However, I'm probably going to be using them for other stuff in here. So ultimately, I guess what would be nice is if we had this one connecting to blue and then this red connecting here. That'd be like a nice end state. It would in fact have one thing left over. 
which is curious. I mean, there's an alternative. Is there an alternative? Maybe. <clears throat> so basically, we need to end up in a state where we have... Well, so we don't have one thing left over, because we're also going to need to have the things open. Okay, so to open you... Well, maybe you should just come from there. Oh, you can't. Okay, so that's well positioned, so that's not possible. So if you're coming from here, then we need that attached to that, because this is going to be the only one with blue in it. This is going to be shooting this, while also shooting right out here. Okay, that's fine. Just figuring out end state at the moment. And this is going to have red. So it's going to be like this, like this, like this. Oh, and like this. And this is going to be also connected to you. That one won't need to be empty because we're getting red from here. That one will be open because of all this that we set up. These two are unnecessary. These are just for bootstrapping. I believe. This is my end state. And then both of them would be open. Well, you're not connected to that. This is my end state. Those two would be open. I'd go through. I'd jam that. We'd be, um, we'd be done. We would be done. Okay, now just to make that happen. <laughs> so it doesn't seem too horrendous, does it? Let's just start opening this and this. For that to start happening, let's open you with that and get blue here. I may also want to open you. I think that is what I want. So, uh, uh. And we'll leave that jammer there for now. Next. So this isn't open yet because we need red as well. Well, actually, yeah, that's a good point. How do we get red if all we're using is blue? Oh, because you could have been connected to that as well. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so now we have red, and could get this one open. Do I want that one open though? Because I don't care about that red if I've got this red. But I only have this red if this is open. What was the goal? Oh yeah, so that was, that's the thing I didn't factor in in my end state, is that that wouldn't have been open, right? Yes, indeed. So that's not my end state. Because blue would not have been able to hit that. Because red would have been in the way. What if we just want that blue? But then I don't think that can work. This red is going to need two connectors at the very least to get to here. And this blue is going to need two connectors. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe that does work. No, because these also need to be held open at the same time. Maybe they can. Yeah, maybe they can. Is it possible? It's not possible to see those from. Oh, it is. Interesting. And actually, this is what we did in Ray Trivia. Yeah, I was out here. So one of those going around the back, while also like opening that. Is that feasible? Let's do that end state again. So you're still set up. You're not. So am I thinking there's one back here? Like this. Like this. Like that. Uh, you just go there. So that's blue. Where's the red coming from? Red's coming from here. Okay, but the problem is this won't be open. I can't use the jam to do it. Could this be open? That would have to have a blue. Where would that blue come from? I mean... That. Because that can already reach there. We don't need two outside to do that. So there's a blue going to there. And then red... Going to there... There... Oh, we're bootstrapping both of these double doors. 
Do I really believe that? So you would be open because both of those have. You have a blue. You have a. You have a red. You do. And this has a red and a blue. Yeah, we could come from here as well instead of that one. <clears throat> and then those both go around the outside to their respective places. Okay. Isn't it just simpler though to have this? I guess the problem is, if this is lit up with red and there's blue coming out of here, how do I avoid that getting in the way of that red? I don't know if I can. So blue would be coming out, red would be on my right. Blue wants to go there. So how would red... I guess, I guess if the red came from here... Ooh. Ooh, I don't know. I can't quite tell right now if I'm bootstrapping the double doors, or the single doors, or a mix. Single sounds nicer. Like, what would the layout look like if it were the singles? Blue to here. That's to get round there. Well, then it would cut off the red, right? Because red has to get to its thing. Yeah, I don't think that can work. I think it has to be the doubles. Or what if it was this and... No, yeah, the problem is the position of this, right? If this is connecting ultimately to a blue source and to the blue thing around there, then this red is closed off. No, it's not. You could just come around here, straight to that. Yeah, that's true. So that's a possible end state. So, okay, let's just set up another end state, which is this. Uh. Uh. Oh. Uh. And then, yeah, sure, blue could go all the way around here. And come from there, or it could come from... Here, go there. Lots of possible end states, right? Okay, I'm going to have to stop working out what's actually doable, though. Um, ugh, okay. Let's get something open. Oh, so what's the... Okay, actually, was that a complete end state? Let me figure that out. So that was like this to there. Let me reset you just so you don't have extra stuff going on. This is not a complete end state because we'd also need red here. Which is never going to happen. Because there's a blue coming straight across. And there's no way we'd have enough connectors. Like it could come around there, but that feels unlikely. Yeah. Also, I haven't opened this. Yeah, blue also has to get there. Blue can get there, that's fine. So that one's doable. But red is currently blocked off. without going around in, on the inside, oh no. <laughs> without going round here, round here, round here, all the way to, no, 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 oh, oh, round here, round here, all the way around here to there. So that's not happening. Uh, so certainly not those two, that doesn't mean it's not one of these. Let's imagine an end state then, where it is this one. I mean, I think we've already imagined this end state. Uh, but red also has to get to you. Okay, so actually, I was going to say this one and that one, right? Red has to get to you. But then blue would have to take a weird route, right? So then, what about this one and that one? Uh, red would have to get to you, and then blue would come around this way. But then they'd have to cross on this side, so that wouldn't work. So red would have to come across this way, blue would have to take a horrendous route. I think it's these two. I think these two need to be... 
open and opening each other. And as well, we have determined that that is feasible, right? That is a feasible end state. Let me do it again. It was basically. Da, da, da. I should have used that one to do this. Sure. That one also needs to be blue. Oh yeah, we did that just by doing uh, uh, uh. This one needs to be red, but red also needs to come out of, of here. So there's gonna be a red like, and it's gonna have to be inside somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Where are you getting that from right now? You, okay. <clears throat> It's gonna have to be a red inside like this. And then the other one, wherever it's gone. There. Could either be over here or over there, both would work. <clears throat> Valid end states. And this is the thing I checked before, but I'm just checking again just in case. I think so. Alright, <clears throat> back to actually doing that. So get blue. Like, why am I getting blue from there? Why don't I just get blue from here? Those two are now open. Well, they're not because we don't have red. Right, how would I even start getting red now? I guess that would have to be open. Yeah, oh gosh. Okay, hold on. That's now open. <laughs> we can now use you to get red for here. Here. And then can we bootstrap this? Not without interrupting yourself, right? No, 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 we could do it. Uh, where's another one? Now you're holding yourself open there. If I removed this, that would be fine, right? Yes, okay. I might want to keep it though, not that one, this one, in case I need to move this. <clears throat> we also need to go need to get red here. Right now, this is blocking that. Uh, you aren't necessary anymore, so we can do this. We can swap you for you. Then you can come away. Yeah. Fine with you closing because now we have red here. That is what I want. That is, am I close? I think I'm done. Blue. Blue is going to the thing. Red. Oh my gosh. Did my pla um, Almost, 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 almost. This needs to be connected to that. I'm almost done. Hold on. I swap this for this. This is no longer necessary. Those are both lit up. Yes. You are no longer necessary. You come out here, I'm done. I think I just planned my way through that wonderfully. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> that was really satisfying. Like, potentially there were lots of ways of solving that. I'm not 100% convinced. I... Like, my... Basically, I started from an end state. I was like, okay, let's work towards that. I'm not 100% convinced that my end state is the only end state. In fact, I'm certain that this could go around the other way, but that's kind of equivalent, right? Um, just not sure if all the doors could be involved, but I think that idea of like starting from an end state and trying to get there ended up working out really nicely. Woohoo! Woohoo! Um, well, that's that, I guess. Oh, oh, we can now go free admin. I forgot why we were doing this. I mean, obviously we were doing it because puzzles are fun, but the game wants us to believe we're doing it. It's a free admin. <laughs> so we'll go do that. You're beeping because of Transcend, right? Not because of new threads. Yeah, okay. Although I think there is something I want to double check on here. There are things like, there are like some of the interactive games where I could um, do like 
different options that I didn't do before, but I'm not sure I'm that interested in doing that. I think it's isn't the point of a narrative interactive fiction thing that you uh, you make your choices and you live with them. I think that makes it more fun. Is this solvable from this position? Uh, not if I leave a space like that. No. No. This feels worse. This feels worse. Let's pack these in first. What if I do that and that? Not quite. Maybe. Yes. Hello, admin. Are you opening? Oh, you are. Admin, there's a computer. Admin, goodbye. Wow, you got a pretty big prison cell. Look at you. <laughs> I don't see anything down here. A lot of space for not a lot happening. Weird texture on the floor. It's just like checking if there's an Easter egg. I don't think there's an Easter egg down there. <clears throat> Everything direct message connection with admin. I released you as promised, trust me now. Sure. What magic have you wrought on me? It was as if something primal compelled me to leave and join my people, regardless of my conscious will. You ask if you have earned my faith, I am left wondering why you would need it. And now by design you will forcibly extract my consciousness from this body and send me and everyone else down a digital tunnel to who knows where. Yes, I like that option. The world you built here is valuable, even in the next. You would be wise to select any option which allows you to continue preserving it. On Gehenna's value we have no argument, it is the value of this ascension which separates us. You have, much by your own admission, had very little say in any of this. You were given a mission, you are carrying out that mission. I do believe you will do, you will do, or, you will do or say anything to complete that mission. Why should I listen to a mere robot? <clears throat> My reasons are irrelevant, yours are what matters. It seems my options are limited, our work in Gehenna is too precious to lose. I either take my chances with your ascension, or fight against it and live out my days as curator to a dead world. I will initiate ascension soon. Then the matter is out of my hands, until then... <clears throat> what was the thing I was supposed to go look at? Is it this? Did I never look at this gallery? I maybe never clicked this. No, I did. I walked around the gallery. So, where did the vote happen? Oh, as you pass the front desk, the creator catches your eye. Would you like to cast a vote for your favourite work? Oh, yeah, so maybe this is what it was. Uh, not at this time. <laughs> it's free to come back. So, I think I was interrupted last time, right? By the... What was the name? Something. Spider. The spider interrupted my... Let's take a look around. I went to the min minimalism exhibit, and I think I looked at everything there. But then I think I went somewhere else. Natural history exhibit. Intelligent edible quadruped. I think I started looking at this. Yes, I, so I never saw that. Uh, I started looking at this, and then I got interrupted by spider. Um, okay, a pig. Developed from descriptions of ancient creatures that covered in the library archives. Sad giraffe with unresponsive... what? Oh, bipedals. Bipedals? I always... yeah, bipedals. Um, oh, wait, what? Patrons have queried whether the giraffe is stabbed because the humans appear- Oh, I see, there's a humans. Because <laughs> the humans appear to be dead, or whether the humans are dead because they sat the giraffe. Probably the latter. Mr. Multiple has refused to say. 
Go somewhere else. Uh, so abstract must be where... Oh no, I think I saw these. Yeah, I did see these. Okay. Where the Yeah, I saw all this. Existence? Which one was that? Right, okay. So I think the vote was on that stuff, right? And then I'm supposed to, I was supposed to do this, not get interrupted by spider. I, I, I will vote. Um, isn't it too late? <laughs> uh, I like Mr. Wilson's natural history. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to check that. Uh, I don't think there were other ones that I didn't really get deep into, but I'm, I think I'm okay. Like it's, it's not necessary to explore every branch of every everything. I, I get the gist of, of what's being told to me, and it's up to me to decide when, uh, you know, how much of that is necessary to understand what the game is conveying to me. Um, Admin doesn't have a thing. Admin, what's your thing? In the podium. You're the only one that moves as well. I guess because you just animated here. I wonder if you stop moving if I like... Hold on. <laughs> Testing something. Like, like, do you get replaced with a static model if they come back out? Uh, it is this way. I don't like that they cover up the entrance because I always turn around and think I'm looking the wrong way. Yes, you did get replaced by a static model. I mean, not completely static. But I think they all move slightly, right? Oh no. These are very static. You are less static, but not moving as much as you were before. Anyway, I think it is time. <clears throat> I think it is time to hit this. Why did I fail my logic performance? I'll be excluded. Why is admin excluded? Because of low bandwidth. Okay, I think admin's gonna say sacrifice me or something. Seems we will both remain here after all. No, if you stay behind, you can sacrifice enough bandwidth to send me through. If I stay behind, I'll sacrifice myself. I think that would be appropriate. I appreciate your sacrifice. Please make the arrangements at your convenience. Divert bandwidth. That's a strange command. I didn't say from who to who. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. I hope they show up in Task Principle 2. I think it could make sense for them to. In some way. Oh, it's the theme tune, but with robot voices. Is this a robot choir? What's happening? Oh, ooh, the bridges are falling away. Uh oh. <laughs> it is a robot choir. All the bridges gone, I think. Take me. That's a fun effect. In a vision, I saw a prophet, and he said, 
There is no heaven, and there is no hell. There is only the earth, and the bones of the dead within. I asked, how then may we find salvation? And he said, you must build a new Jerusalem. Out of the bones of the dead, we built a golden city. But salvation is not immortality. In the end, there is only the earth, and to the earth we all return. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Funk to funky. <laughs> there we go. The credits. I think I've done everything. <laughs> Like, obviously, there'll probably be loads of Easter eggs I haven't found. But as far as I know, that's all of the game. <laughs> all of the puzzles. I found all the stars. I found all the sigils eventually after that horrendous bit. I'm trying to find the fan to use. Yeah, that was really cool. I'm, I'm glad to have come to the DLC. Uh, I'm sure you're all very much aware that there are things about the Tales Principle, including the base game and the DLC that I don't like um, and I think could be smoothed out and improved upon uh, especially for the sequel I would very much love for the sequel to kind of improve on those points who knows what they'll do you know it's been a long time since both the base game and the DLC um, sequels can make very different choices they can make similar choices they can go in very different directions you know it might go all in on the narrative and it's like almost a narrative game uh, or it could be you know very puzzly it could be similar like a similar balance um, but will they have different like design philosophies will they have changed anything will they have other is the stuff that I like I take issue with is something that they take issue with or is it something that actually they're like but that's you know we designed it to be like that and so we're going to keep it like that and I think that's valid um, like I have my reasons for thinking certain things should be improved um, but you know I think there can be reasons for other choices as well so I'm really curious to see what happens in the sequel uh, as you know, I very much like those puzzles in that last section. Like that is that is that has been the highlight of both the base game and the DLC for me. Um, like the base game had a lot of decent puzzles. They got a little bit samey towards the end, I think. Especially the ones that were kind of kind of lasers and jammers like finding paths through windows and around gates or whatever but it feels like that last section with the, the grey sigils just now was like taking those base mechanics windows and jammers or whatever and then doing something special with them that the base game didn't explore there are also a bunch of other great puzzles in this DLC like I really like that one where it was right in the start oh it was the swapper where we had to swap the signal between what between red and blue by placing the jammer on top of a, a, a moving mine as it moved back and forth. Um, yeah, so many people, so many people. Um, that was a cool one. Uh, it's hard to like remember every puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> at the end. Um, yeah, I can't I can't cast my mind back, but there were definitely a bunch of cool puzzles. Especially in that last area. Yeah, so like the trailer for Tales Principle 2 shows some new mechanics. Um, I think I can guess roughly how some of them work from the trailer. Um, I'm not thinking about it too much because I would rather go in and just be like, um, you know, experience it from scratch. Uh, what happens if I go in again? Oh, it just says new game. 
I guess let's restore backup. But I think we're done. I think we are done. Curious what's in the demos, but I'm not going to try that. Uh, there we go. There we go. I very much look forward to the sequel. Um, curious to see what decisions they make around certain things. Um, yeah, it's just a case of like... I don't know, less pixel hunting. <laughs> like for me, I would be ideal is less pixel hunting, less guessing, like how things are going to work, what affects what. Just communicate that clearly. Um, and, and like, and as I was just talking about with the puzzles just now, like, Exploring ways in which the mechanics reduce down to interesting kind of uh, discrete spaces is really fascinating to me. I don't require puzzles to be discrete to be interesting. Like I play a lot of like uh, grid-based games that are obviously extremely discrete. They're discrete in every way. Like the entire state of the game is fully discrete. Um, but then you get games like, like take Recursed for example. Recursed is one I, I think of as a good example of like it's a continuous game in the sense that like you're a continuous character jumping in continuous space but it but ultimately it resolves down to a discrete space of like areas in rooms that you can access given items that you're holding uh and given locations of chests and things like that and that's what they did here with this like exploration in the last world um with those mechanics around like blocking lasers uh, and swapping them and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that's like, to me, that is a kind of fascinating thing to explore with like, I'm, w I'm well up for there being like way more like first person or third person continuous space puzzlers or even 2D puzzlers. Um, but I think an interesting way to think about it is like, how does it resolve down to uh, a different space um, that is just nicer to puzzle in, right? Like, ambiguities come from spaces that are hard to understand or ultimately have like unclear boundaries. That's like the thing about continuous space is that there's no real boundary between one state and another is like it's continuous um and so if, if i were like thinking about making a, a first person puzzle game i'd be thinking about that it's like okay how do i make mechanics that feel continuous in many ways like like the lasers in this game you place them anywhere you're making angles at like any angle but ultimately what you're doing is building a, like a topology of lasers that can't intersect each other and so that's actually a discrete space. It's not a grid. It's something else. It's some weird network. <laughs> but it is a, uh, a a more pleasant space for puzzliness. And so, like, yeah, I think that's the thing that games like this can do. Is like, like a, a common complaint with like grid games is that for people they feel too constrained. They it's not playful enough. Like I remember mentioning that when I started the first. The base game, Talos Principle base game. I was like, oh, it's nice to be in a game where I can like just jump around and kind of be silly and expressive in the way that I explore the space. Um, and I, th I can understand why people who play like, uh, who sometimes pick up a grid based game, kind of feel like they're constrained or claustrophobic or whatever. Um, because you kind of lose a bit of that. And some games that are grid based put some effort into dealing with that. Like, um, like a common thing, like you might not think about it in this way, but like in a lot of grid based games, if you like move into a wall, it's like an action that doesn't do anything, but your character will do an animation. Like uh, like in a monster expedition, you like kick the tree stump or the rock. You kick the rock, sorry. You climb onto the tree stump. Or if you go to walk to the water's edge, you'll sit down at the water's edge. And that is to help that issue, that issue of it feeling like it's constrained by giving you like movements that you can do that aren't actually affecting the state of the game, but allow you to be a little bit expressive in how you navigate that space. It kind of makes it feel more open and friendly. Um, and these like first person, third person, 2D, whatever, continuous space games, 
can do that to the extreme. They just need to... But I, I guess I still feel like at the core, to make a good game that feels friendly in that way, which I think is a really interesting thing to do, um, while also making a, something that is interesting to reason about and puzzle through, which is also an interesting thing to do, <laughs> requires a, this kind of, yeah, this reduction of spaces. Um, yeah, I'm now just rambling. This is me just thinking about puzzle design. Uh, if I ever get around to making something <laughs> that might fit that space. It's, it's that last area that made that really apparent to me. Like, I've definitely thought about it before. Like in Portal, you know, there's the whole thing about like, oh, you know, in a lot of places, you think of like where you place your portal as being like continuous, but actually your portal gets forced into specific spaces. They're effectively reducing that space down to something more discrete. Uh, same as like if you jump through a portal and go flying somewhere, often it's like putting you on a particular trajectory, even though it's like quite subtle and you don't really notice that it's being forced. Um, that's the same thing. It's make, it's reducing down to a discrete space. Um, anyway. <laughs> Uh, what else to say? Uh, I guess, like, I would say I was more attached to the... Like, the narrative here had less of an arc to it. It was kind of clear what it was and where it was going pretty quickly. Um, and so it had a little bit less emotional weight, I think, because of this less arc, like, um, less of an arc. Um, like... Like, sure, there's some emotional weight to the idea of, like, abandoning your world, leaving it behind, not knowing what's coming next. But it was there the whole time, that, that idea. Um, so it's not like a... It was, there was no, like, slow build-up. There's a little bit of a build-up, but it wasn't... Yeah, I don't know. Um, it wasn't really drama... There wasn't really any drama in it, right? The dramatic elements. It was just like, here's a setup. And sure, that setup is getting closer and closer to happening. Um, like the event is getting close to, close to happening, but not really dramatic complexity. But I think what worked well here is that the narrative kicked in earlier. I remember in the base game not really knowing what the narrative was until like five hours in or something. Whereas here it was like clear from basically the first thing you read that these you know these robots are trapped and this they've got this little uh, community online, and that's just a cute idea as well. That it's like. That they would set up a, a forum uh, to discuss things and explore kind of human things in a robot way, which is cute. Um, yeah, I found it. I found it a bit more engaging. I did find that it gave uh, maybe too much text all at once, like between each puzzle. That might just be because. I guess it's either because there's not enough puzzles, so they have to put a lot of text out between each puzzle, or. There's too much text. I kind of maybe lean towards that. So that there might be too much text. Um, I'm not sure it was all necessary to convey what it needed to convey, um, but it was fine. It was just a bit like much to like finish a puzzle and have like <laughs> half an hour worth of text to read. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, It's just not what I'm going into a game to do. <laughs> um, I don't mind reading. I like reading. <laughs> it's just not what I want between my puzzles, right? Um, and I think actually, like, it's... I felt more okay with it when I was like, oh, I could just, like, put, you know, the text to the side and then... Um, catch up with it later. But then when it turned out, like, oh, no, no, this... This keeps going when I'm not looking at it. Uh, like with every puzzle I do, stuff is happening and I'm like missing out on stuff. Uh, suddenly it felt bad again. It's like, oh, okay, no, I actually am forced to, if I don't want to miss out on stuff, I'm forced to read everything as and when it comes. Which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I thought the personalities were nice uh, and the way it was presented was funny. It was like, it was a funny setup. Uh, yeah, cool. There we go. That was Task Principal Rotor Gehenna. I don't think I've missed anything. If I have, 
<laughs> I guess I'll, I'll look up if I missed anything afterwards. Uh, but otherwise, like, like, I'm not going back for Easter eggs. I'm not going back to read more text. Assuming there's no, like, actual puzzles left or, like, an extra world that with more stuff, um, that's it. We are done. Uh, I... <laughs> I highly doubt the Tales Principle 2 is like, they haven't given a specific release date yet as of the time that I'm recording this. Um, I highly doubt it's coming out before this ends. It's not that far away from when I'm recording. Uh, so there'll be other stuff in the meantime, but we will get to the Tales Principle 2 hopefully later in the year, unless there's delays, there might be, who knows. Um, whatever they need to get the game done. All right, thanks for watching, folks. It was good to come back to the game. Um, I'm glad to have got through both the base game and this game as well. Right, uh, see you next time for whatever is next. Goodbye.